everyone, it's AIBC Sigma Eurasia 2024 in Dubai, day two. Astrid Safarian is here at Sigma Media Lounge. Now let me introduce my guest, Vas Modinos, founder at Block Ready. Hello Vas and welcome to Sigma Eurasia. Hi, welcome, good morning, thank you for having me. Thank you for taking your time to have this interview with us. Vas, I know you're an IT professional with uh, 22 years of professional experience, the last 18 of which was uh, spent in micro Microsoft, and the last eight was in Web3 uh, industry. And starting from 2021, you also feature as public speaker, right? So can you please tell about you and your background a little bit more? Yes, I mean, I'm a, I'm a techie. Uh, most of my career was in uh, IT. Mm -hmm. So uh, about 22 years of a career. Uh, 18 years, as you said, I spent at Microsoft. Uh, I started my career back in the UK. And the last uh, 14, 15 years, I was actually, I live and worked here at Microsoft uh, UAE. Um, well, across Microsoft 18 years, I've did many different roles, obviously, uh, that's a long period of time to work in a company. So mostly technical roles, consultant, a solution architect, and I've uh, also been an uh, um, account manager and also in technical sales. But for the last eight years, I got fascinated by the technology behind blockchain and crypto. I, I got into this uh, rabbit hole, as they say, and then I st ever since then I've been uh, involved in multiple areas of the industry, mostly about understanding um, how to educate people mm -hmm. and how to uh, make sure that we uh, increase the adoption of newcomers uh, actively engaged uh, with, uh, with this industry, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I was wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, we, we know that you are considered as a blockchain, crypto, and Web3 enthusiast, uh, but you are also a Web3 educator. And nowadays we have, let's say, a problem, yeah? <laughs> One of the most significant barriers to Web3 adoption is lack of awareness. So uh, can you please tell me how does the, that current lack of Web3 education impact the broader adoption of it? Yeah, there's a lot of challenges around uh, uh, adoption and how education or the lack of education is actually affecting uh, the deep uh, adoption that we actually uh, all expecting in this space. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is obviously there is a, a problem around the, the kind of uh, technical barrier for people who are coming in. Um, some of my uh, experiences, the user experiences, and some, some of the uh, applications existing now, they don't have a very friendly UI. So unless you have a technical background, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to kind of like uh, adopt and start using these applications. Uh, the next thing is, obviously lack of awareness makes people uh, a little bit wary, um, mostly about you know, lack of trust and thinking that this space is not legitimate. Um, and they hear all this about the scams and the frauds and the hacks, mm -hmm. and they get really like uh, uh, worried about entering. And of course, you have lack of education, which affecting the regulators and the policymakers. Uh, and uh, because they don't know enough about the space, they may come up with policies in their own regions, which are either not comprehensive enough or lack of uh, uh, um, lack of uh, enough um, coverage mm -hmm. of all the areas we need regulation on. A and finally, for the investors. Typically, what we see is they go into a space trying to invest without knowing enough, and then, of course, they fall into mistakes, they lose their money, uh, and then, obviously, they get scared, and then they don't come back for a long, long time uh, until they potentially feel more confident. This is the mm -hmm. problem uh, that spans across all these areas when we have that uh, lack of education that's currently we're experiencing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the most effective method for individuals to learn and stay updated with uh, Web3 technologies? Yeah, this is the biggest problem because everyone tries to learn in their own way, of course, but most people, I don't think they do it right. Um, most people would try to learn with a very um, chaotic mm -hmm. approach. Like you go into YouTube, you go scrolling through different uh, YouTube channels and, and you're you looking get at lost. <laughs> you get lost, you get kind of like confused, but also you get misinformed. Mm -hmm. You don't ha understand which ones are the facts, which ones are the information that people are trying to kind of push towards you. Uh, you also don't have a structure. You start from one topic, you jump to another, then you mm -hmm. discover something else. You go from, you know, from stable coins to CBDCs, then you go back to like understanding maybe decentralized applications, and there's a the new protocol. So it's really chaotic and mm -hmm. definitely not effective. 
and that's why there people should be a method, right? Yes, like a correct yes. method to uh, deliver it. Social media is not curated, mm. it's not structured. So it's not really the ideal way of learning. Of course, most people do it because it's free, mm. but they trade the, f the free education uh, with time, right? Mm. Because yes. it will take you months time. and months <laughs> and months to yes. understand the space and make the mistakes and pay for those mistakes, mm. mostly with your money, but also with your time. And then eventually, at some point, people realize, well, I need to learn it in a different way. So the way to learn it is through trusted resources that you select one by one. Mm -hmm. You don't have like 20 different sources of information. You just select the very few uh, trusted ones. And you have to make sure that all the information you consume is curated mm -hmm. and up to date <coughs> and always giving you the latest in, uh, on the trends and latest topics that you need to learn to stay up to date. Because the problem here is we have an industry that is constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. So you need to always keep learning and keep, uh, keep yourself up to date. Talking about keeping that staying up to date, so uh, okay, but uh, we also will need to keep that educational material up to date, right? So, yes. so can you please tell us about this? Uh, how 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 you how the educators and organizations navigate this issue, and for example, how does Block Ready does yeah. that? This is one of the areas we address at Block Ready. So we saw obviously those problems, the challenge around educating people, the challenge around uh, not learning the most efficient way. So we've come up with an idea of developing the world's first AI and SERP assisted online Web3 course. Mm -hmm. And what we do with this is we actually, we don't come up with our own topics, we let the technology do that. So in the, in the age of AI and in the age of like uh, uh, internet and Google search, we shouldn't be deciding what should be in an online course and what should be the structure. We need to let technology do this. So the way we do it, we actually use technologies such as AI and SERP to keep an online course always up to date mm -hmm. and always growing with the help of technology. So if you wanted to explain, um, SERP, stands for a search engine results page. It's basically what you get on the first page of Google when you make a, a query on a specific keyword. Let's say you go to Google and you type in blockchain. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get some results, and then a little bit further down, you're gonna get something called people also ask. Mm -hmm. These are questions that people ask frequently worldwide. Mm -hmm. So Google knows what is the questions for everyone that needs to know, right? These are the ones that most people are asking. So there must be uh, the first things you should also be asking mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. So we use this technology to collect uh, different questions and different trends and topics and challenges and, uh, and potentially uh, facts uh, around uh, 80 different topics. So we started with you know, 20, 30, then we increased the search results. So we came up with like 80 different keywords blockchain, CBDCs, um, decentralized uh, um, applications, of course mining and DeFi and everything else that we could think of. We got these results back from Google of what we should be putting in our on online course. And then we're using AI to basically structure uh, in different modules and different lessons, categorize, um, easy, medium, difficult, mm -hmm. and, and also curate. Uh, with the help of humans, of course, and uh, guiding the AI to generate the right content, making f user friendly and so forth. And then we use something like uh, text to speech to make the text to a, to a voice, so people cannot just read, but actually can listen to this, um, mm -hmm. uh, to this content that we create. And we also use something called micro learning. We don't allow us to have multiple long articles and videos. We keep it very short and mm -hmm. to the point. So people, even if they have 10 minutes, in their time, in a busy schedule, they can jump into a lesson and they can either listen or read, read to yes. it, and it takes like 10 minutes of their time, and they just learned a new topic. The next morning, the next few days, when they have more time, they can go back to the course, and by that time, we may even have up-to-date information on a new lesson they want to, uh, to uh, consume, and again, it will take 10, 15 minutes max from their time. Amazing. Uh, Vas, I know that the last three years of uh, your career, you also feature as a public speaker, and I know that you are also among Sigma Eurasia speakers, so I'm sure you will be having speeches, uh, panels, uh, conferences, so what will be the content uh, that you're gonna share? So uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm in a panel. Uh, the topic is uh, ethical AI. Is it good or not? That's the topic. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, every panelist has got different backgrounds. And in my case, I am uh, gonna cover 
the ethical AI part for education. Mm -hmm. So we are obviously trying to understand how, first of all, AI can help education in, in, in a whole, not just for blocks in, in Web3, but in whole, um, and also how, um, how we should really uh, control the way that AI is used in education so that we make sure that we don't have any um, challenges such as bias coming from the AI tools that we use, uh, privacy of information and data because obviously AI gets access to some material who may, which may potentially be of some kind of like uh, privacy uh, uh, requirements. And then of course uh, in the way that uh, the AI will coexist with the actual educators and the teachers. So that's what we are covering today. Very interesting. So how you measure your success uh, in 2023 and the success of uh, Block Ready? So, so far we've had uh, a good 2023. We've got uh, uh, the initial product out uh, actually towards the end of 2023 uh, with a, a pilot phase which we wanted to get as much feedback as we can from a, a base uh, of about 100 users uh, to basically understand uh, whether this is something that would be of use. I mean, the feedback was really uh, uh, overwhelming. Everyone was really uh, very positive about having a product that can take them uh, in a very s small structured steps from zero to, to an expert level within, potentially, I would say, we could have someone uh, consuming the course and then within two weeks, they, they probably know uh, more than someone who's actually out there strolling the internet for like two months, three months. So. The, the e feedback was great, uh, and now we actually uh, started going to market uh, with our first uh, marketing campaigns and uh, um, doing some partnerships. So 2024 is looking quite promising. And uh, what is the best thing you think you need to educate about Web3? Uh, you mean the best topic or the best people? Best topic. Best topic. Um, Web3 has got a lot of topics, but to be honest, it must be the unique characteristics of cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. You don't have to specifically be a favorable of one cryptocurrency over another. You know, the Bitcoin uh, maximalist will say there's only one coin, Bitcoin. Uh, but of course, every coin comes in with their own unique value proposition. Exactly. But what, I, what everyone should know is the only single um, unique characteristics that cryptocurrencies offer us. And this is the fact that you own it. There's no other currency or uh, service, financial service, that allows us to own our own money. No PayPal, no bank, no credit card, uh, no application allows us to own our money and exchange it with someone else uh, directly without an intermediary. So everyone has to understand how this is achieved, what technology is behind it, and how we can revolutionize the way we exchange value and revolutionize our financial services as a whole. Uh, one question, you learn, normally you learn uh, even more about the same topic when you start to educate it, right? <laughs> so what was the best thing you learned during your own speeches, conferences, maybe from those people who maybe gave you some questions and made you delve into the topic more and just learn more about this? Did that happen to yes, you? Yes, yes, that happens all the time. And this is something actually I incorporated inside our online course at BlockReady. Uh, what I've learned is that everyone has their own style mm. of learning. And we're talking about multiple different ways of, st of styles uh, of learning. Everyone is different and you have to cater for everyone's uh, uh, preferences. Mm -hmm. And it comes, this, this problem becomes uh, even more apparent because you also have uh, different backgrounds. So everyone comes with different backgrounds. Some have more technical background, some have financial background, mm -hmm. some have entrepreneurship background. So everyone has a different background. The second the thing way is- The way of perception of the yes. information. So the way well. their mind works also is yeah. different. The second thing is everyone has a slightly different level of understanding of existing knowledge mm -hmm. on the field. So you need to cater for this. So in Block Ready online course, what we do is we actually have more than eight different learning formats, we call them. Mm -hmm. So we have learning formats for all type of different personalized preferences. Mm -hmm. uh, so people can choose how they want to learn. And we have uh, different ways to consume information. And the other thing we need to make sure is we actually make it simple, right? We don't want to overwhelm people with uh, unnecessary additional complex information. We keep it simple to make sure that people are on board. And we actually even categorize our lessons. Mm -hmm. 
to start from beginner level, then we have intermediary, and then we have advanced as well. So that way we try to bring everyone aboard. But I wanted to add one more thing, which is I think it's important because it aligns with the mission of block rating. Apart from the topics and the way that we teach, we also want to touch the people who actually need this education the most. Because and when they need it, they will learn even with, with more enthusiasm, uh, right? Our <laughs> mission is to, to teach the people who need that to change their lives. Mm -hmm. Like me and you and everyone in maybe in this event, perhaps we are the lucky ones. Perhaps we have some uh, opportunities available to us because of the places we live uh, or the, you know, the, the people or the networks we are part of. But people in perhaps developing countries as well or, or people who are working two jobs mm -hmm. or perhaps they don't have time to spend three months on the internet trying to consume information and understand. Um, these are the people we want to touch because we believe that Web3 as an industry have got so much opportunity for them to actually do anything they want. They can open up their own business. They can find a, a new career in this industry. Uh, they, can, uh, they can definitely um, have a, a brand new um, a way of, uh, of uh, earning, earning money and, and basically taking care of their family. And these are the people we want to actually touch first uh, because we believe that we can change their lives. So this is the mission behind the whole idea of creating something which can be uh, educating people fast, uh, safe, safely, right? We don't want to give them any information that is not correct. So we always keep uh, make sure that it's all fact factually uh, uh, correct. And we want to make it uh, as, uh, um, as uh, efficient and uh, as uh, uh, painless as possible for them to enter mm -hmm. the space. And what to wait on 2024? Uh, you mean from uh, Block Ready? Or yes. From so we, we'd like to uh, expand now on partnerships. So we're looking to uh, speak to universities. Uh, we would like to, uh, to, to address uh, the, the topic of students also entering the space because we think these are the ones who are really literally going to bring that innovation that we need in the space. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, clever uh, students with uh, amazing startup ideas out there. So we are looking to um, uh, connect with uh, universities. We also try to connect with other um, companies uh, like communities uh, and also events such as this one where we would uh, try to um, uh, uh, touch as many people as we can and, uh, and initially, we want to, to try to get as much feedback as we can to see how we can improve this. Uh, so far, I think the, what we built is the most um, comprehensive and, uh, and um, covers every topic that potentially a newcomer would want. But we always can make, make uh, improvements. Uh, AI is always evolving. So we're looking to bring more AI technology to curate and, 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 uh, and help us uh, make this course the best it can be. Vas, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, thank you for taking your time to have this interview with us. So I wish you, from my side and from the whole Sigma group, we wish you best of luck. We wish you having an amazing speeches during your panels. And uh, we wish you, well, good luck in here in Dubai. Uh, enjoy the rest of the event and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.